Hey, thanks for watching another video from WeldingTipsAndTricks.com. Today we're talking about doing some uh, oxyfuel cutting. And a little disclaimer for you, this is not a comprehensive oxyfuel safety course. You can get a very good DVD from Smith Torch Equipment. And uh, today's video is mainly on uh, just some tips. So what does a pocket reference manual for welding, uh, drill index, and an auto darkening welding helmet have to do with making a good cut using oxyacetylene or oxyfuel uh, welding equipment. Because there's, there's, a, there's a lot of difference in using the right stuff and the right pressures and the right settings and the right techniques for getting a good cut. So today we're talking about acetylene only. There's lots of other fuel gases like uh, propane, map gas, propylene, and all that. Today we're talking strictly on acetylene because it seems like more uh, you know, hobbyists and more small uh, type fab shops use acetylene than other fuel gases. Right. So before you light up, after making sure that everything's in good order, your, your cylinders are chained securely and everything, uh, there's a sequence of setting up and shutting down lighting the torch. Once I've made sure that there's no pressure on these gauges at all on either side and that the uh, adjustment screws are loose, there's no tensioning on the springs, I'm ready to turn the gas on. But Human nature seems to be, I want to see how much gas is in there, and I want to see those needles move when I turn it on. So I've watched a lot of guys, and, and uh, typically they turn it on just like this, watching, and a little too fast. You want to turn this on very, very slow. There is a phenomenon called the, the uh, heat of recompression. If there's already pressure in here left over, and you shoot a bunch of pressure in there, the temperature spikes momentarily, all it takes is a speck of dust, a little bit of oil, anything in there becomes fuel, and you get a, a regulator burnout, RBO. If you don't believe what I'm telling you, just Google RBO, RBO OSHA incident, RBO accident, regulator burnout. Uh, you'll find all kinds of things, all kinds of reports where people have been injured by turning this on too fast while there was still pressure in here, and it causes a regulator burnout. That, uh, oxygen saturates the clothes, and, and it's a big problem. Bad, bad burns on the torso and worse. So um, what you want to do is, you, there's no point. You don't need to see the needles move. It does no good. You, don't, you can see them after the fact, all right? So really the safe thing to do is get at arm's length and look away. Look away. If that thing, if for some reason it explodes, I'd a lot rather have it, have it hit me here than in my face, right? Okay, and, and it's not gonna explode because we're gonna turn it on nice and slow after making sure there's no pressure in here. So let's go, all right? I'm, I'm at arm's length. I'm cracking it as slow as I can. So I don't shoot a bunch of pressure in there. And then once I get it done, I can crank it open as fast as I want and backseat that valve because it's a backseat valve. It's a high pressure cylinder, oxygen, nitrogen, and, and others are high pressure cylinders and have a back seat type valve. The acetylene now, I don't have that same risk, but I still don't want to turn it on fast just because. All right, so I want to crank it slow, but I only want to turn it maybe half a turn. Sometimes half a turn won't even make the regulator register, and in which case you're going to have to turn it maybe three quarters. But the, the point is, don't turn it open all the way because if something bad happens, you want to be able to shut it down quick, like with one turn of the wrist or or two at the most. Uh, sometimes these stems leak and sparks will get over here and ignite the stem on the, uh, the, the ignite the gas leaking around the stem but maybe the valves the packing it isn't, isn't just right and you get a flame here and you kind of want to be able to turn that off quick without crank 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 crank. In fact there is a point at which you don't even want to turn it off. If that flame is shooting up this high you know it's time to get out of dodge. It's not time to uh, grab a glove and try to crank that thing shut. That's a, that's a judgment call. The CGA, the Compressed Gas Association, basically says that when it is safe to do so, if there's some kind of flame here, then turn it off. So, you know, if it's a little match, type, uh, match size flame, personally, I'm not saying this is the thing to do. I'm just telling you what I would probably do. I'd probably reach over here as quickly as I could and turn it off. Again, if it's, if it's shooting up here and I see the, I see the valve starting to melt, uh-uh, I'm out of there. All right, so I've turned this open roughly half a turn. 
Now, where do I set these gauges, okay? Do I set them at 10 and 40? Not really, because it depends on what tip I'm using. It depends on uh, thickness, of, thickness of the metal. It depends on the manufacturer's guidelines. The manufacturers for oxy-fuel equipment are all different. The, the, the torch heads are all different. They mix differently. There's different designs. Smith, for instance, has an in-the-head in mix, and Victor is in the body, typically. Okay, and others. So uh, it, it requires, they, they've done their homework and, and they have tip charts recommending the, uh, the safest and opt most optimum pressures to get a good cut and also to be safe. Okay, so uh, one way, if you do not have any manufacturer's tip charts, maybe. One way is to just uh, determine that center hole size by using a drill index and uh, and then consulting some type of a chart. That center hole is really the main thing when determining how much oxygen uh, pressure you need. So somebody emailed me about this little cool little book made uh, published by Audell. It's called The Welding Pocket Reference. You can get it on Amazon. And I ordered it just to see if it was any good and see if I could recommend it. Well, I can recommend it. It's, it's a good book. It does have a few little technical errors in it, but it's a good book. Another one is The Welding Encyclopedia. And I've got a 1964 edition that I got from Amazon. These are hard to get. Uh, you, you're going to drive yourself crazy trying to get a good one. Uh, you know, being a 1964, you would think it wouldn't be useful. It's very useful. There's an old saying, uh, if you need a new idea, read an old book. And, and I think that's very true. And uh, probably the reason is that these days we're so smart that we, uh, we forgot a lot of the basics. So it reminds you on a lot of the things that uh, you, should, you should already know. So once you know the settings, once you determine the pressure settings, either by the manufacturer's guidelines tip chart or by some other, either using a drill index and, and looking it up in some other reference manual, set the uh, regulators. And then after you do that, open each torch valve momentarily to purge for a little while to make sure you don't have any mixed gases. Make sure you've only got acetylene and only got oxygen in each line. And then when you light, only use acetylene, but use a full half turn. That way you won't get the little wimpy little flame with the little black paratroopers that get all over your face. You'll get a good safe flame with a lot of flow that won't pop back and you won't have mixed gas situation going on inside the torch head or torch body with a potential for a flashback. And then to set the torch, if it jumps away from the tip, which a lot of times it does, you got to back it back down and then increase it to where the soot just starts to go away. There's barely any soot in the flame. That's your reference point. That's your reference point to get the most out of a tip and to have adequate flow to keep that tip cooled off, keep it from getting hot, keep, from, keep flashbacks from happening. Then add oxygen to the flame and continue adding oxygen to get a neutral flame, which means basically your cones define without any feathers on the end of them. And then when you give it a little, uh, give it a little extra pressure by hitting the lever, you might have to add a little oxygen to keep those flames from changing much on you, and now you're ready to cut. Now, you should have proper eyewear, and uh, I like to use actually auto darkening welding helmet. I got a couple of them that have a cut and grind mode. This is a Miller Digital Elite. It's got four sensors on it. It's a really good helmet, and I can keep my cheater lens in there, my magnifier, and I can set it either the shade three for a, a grind mode or shade five for a cut mode. It doesn't know whether I'm cutting or or uh, or grinding. And so it depends on how thick a cutting I'm doing. If I'm cutting really thick stuff, I might set it on a five, but shade three sometimes is good for cutting. So I'm using this tip, and it's got, like again, it's like a, a 40 thousandths uh, cut orifice, and I set it a, a, accordingly. And I'm cutting quarter-inch metal here now. That's not a bad cut, but it's not a great cut. The slag's kind of hanging on a little bit, uh, rounded the top corner. It's, uh, it just didn't do a, a really, really clean job. For most things that I do, you know, a lot of times that, that slag would probably knock off pretty good. But keeping the same tip and the same settings, I put some three-quarter inch metal uh, up on the table here. And I'm going to cut it. And it cuts it just fine. I didn't have to go ultra slow. But you'll see the difference in the quality of the cut here in just a sec. Same tip, that's a, that's a cleaner cut with basically no slag hanging on the bottom, pretty straight. The top is not rounded off much, pretty good clean cut. So this tip is probably best for around half inch and did fine for three quarter inch thick metal. 
So use the right size tip for the right size job and you, you get a lot better cut. And the way to do that is you have to have some kind of reference manual like that little Audell book. Now I'm going to show you kind of how I cut here. I usually cradle one hand in the other hand, make a few dry runs, and uh, you know I can make circle cuts like this. I can make a good 12, 14 inch long cut without any problem. And uh, this is the three quarter here. I'm using uh, about 10 on the acetylene and about 45 to 50 on the oxygen for this three quarter inch stuff. And what you want to do is try to go smooth and steady. Don't go ultra slow. You'll know if you go too fast, it'll blow back on you and it won't cut all the way through. So you kind of find where that edge is and, and uh, where you go just fast enough or just slow enough to, to make the cut and uh, fast enough not to leave a bunch of slag and, and melt that top corner off a lot. All right, now when you're done cutting for the day, uh, there is a certain way you need to shut down. So to shut down, I want to shut the fuel gas down. Now manufacturers vary on this, but most will tell you to shoot the fuel, to turn the fuel gas off, and then it turns the, the flame off. Then you turn the oxygen off here. What's next? This is a critical step next, because if you can remember this, everything else will make sense going forward in the shutdown procedure. First thing I do is I shut my, my, shut my flame off. I'm turning the gas off, the fuel gas off first, then the oxygen. The next thing is, leave the regulator alone, the next thing is go to the power source. Go to the main source as if it was a lockout, tagout procedure on electrical uh, things. This is the shutoff switch, so I'm going to turn off the source, okay? All the off. This is how you shut down properly. Leave it set, safe for the next guy. All right, I've turned those all the way off. Do I do this next? No, no, I don't, because if I do that, I can't bleed it off here. I'm going to leave pressure in here. That's that's the dangerous situation for the next guy with that recompression thing uh, that I mentioned earlier. So the next thing is bleed uh, bleed off here. So I can do that most quickly on the oxygen just by hitting the uh, the lever. That goes all the way down to zero on the gauges. I'm done there. Then I want to bleed off the acetylene. Let it go bottom out all the way down. Nothing there. Then I'm going to shut off all the valves here. And then what I want to do is back these screws off to where they're loose. No, no tension, no spring tension on them. That leaves it safe for the next guy in case he doesn't remember. You didn't leave any pressure in here. You didn't leave any pressure in here. So now, you know, if he does... Uh, he's not spooled up on these safety procedures and he turns us on suddenly, it's going to be safer for him. It's a lot less likely for him to, to get that uh, regulator burnout, RBO, okay? So, you know, the best, the best advice I can give you is get the manufacturer's guide and follow it as far as pressures, as far as uh, sequence of set, setup and shutdown and all that. This is not a comprehensive safety course. The best one I have seen is Smith Torch Company. Uh, they make about a 40 or 45 minute DVD, very comprehensive, very thorough. That in conjunction with a hands-on uh, setup shutdown procedure and a written test makes for a good oxy-fuel program. The main things, don't turn this on suddenly. Make sure before you even turn it on that you don't have any pressure on the gauges and that this is loose so that you know there's no pressure in, in here in between the regulator body and the main uh, cylinder valve, okay? Now, another main thing is look away and crack it slowly when you turn it on. Crack it very slowly, okay? Not fast, slowly. Crack it slowly, then you can crank it and open it up all the way. And then the other thing is uh, don't add oxygen to the flame when you're lighting. That just creates an extra risk. You know, it, 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 it's a risk of flashback. Always have check valves. You know, at the bare minimum, you, you definitely need uh, check valves. If you want to get uh, flashback arresters that have check valves built in, that's probably a good idea. Don't add oxygen to the flame when you light it. Just add more acetylene so that you don't get the soot. It won't hurt to get a good heavy acetylene flame, you know, uh, when, when you light it. It doesn't hurt a bit then you can back it down. 
then the main thing that makes the shutdown sequence uh, make sense is going back to the cylinder right after you shut off the flame, turning off the cylinders, then bleeding it down, then backing these off, then you're done. All right? Be safe. Thanks again for watching another video from WeldingTipsAndTricks.com.